Good morning and welcome to worship with Grace English Lutheran Church in Berlin, Wisconsin. We're so happy that you're able to join us for worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday, a special Sunday when we acknowledge the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and how they are in relationship with each other as one God. Today we have the special privilege of having a message from presiding bishop of the ELCA, the Reverend Elizabeth Eaton. It's one of the privileges that we get uh, during this strange time when we are not gathering in person for worship because she is able to greet the congregations across the ELCA uh, right in our worship services. And so if you've never had a chance to hear the presiding bishop uh, preach before, we're very excited that we're able to host her here uh, in our worship service, and we give thanks for that. It's a particularly troubling time this week. It's a time when we really want to be together. So much has happened since even the last time we were together in worship online. The pandemic continues, and we know that, and it's keeping us apart. But right now, we know that pull to be together when we see so much going on in our world around us. We know that it's better to be together. And so you should know that we already had in place uh, plans for a task force to begin talking about how we might be able to come together uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, don't get too excited that it's going to be immediately, but we are starting to think about ways that we can come together and worship in person, uh, making sure that it is a safe way to come together. Uh, that might include some things outside, uh, but again, stay tuned for that. With all that's going on around our country, we're all coming to worship today. I think weary and with a lot on our minds. Uh, we saw the death of George Floyd, yet another unarmed black man dying when a police officer, a white police officer, knelt on his neck. And we have, as a country, have been wrestling with what does this mean for us as a country, as a people? How do we talk about racism that's built into systems? How do we do that and think about where we might be overlooking things. And also we come to this day knowing that people have been protesting the use of, of force, of undue force on black men and, and black women and unequal rights for uh, people of color. And many of them have been protesting and using our First Amendment right to protest peacefully, and we also know that some people have been opportunists. We know that some people have been causing damage to property, and that that upsets us, and that we aren't quite sure what to do with that, and we wonder if maybe that undoes some of the things that the people that are protesting are trying to uh, talk about. Now is a time for us all to listen, to listen deeply, and to try to make sense of what is going on in our world, and how can we be part of the mending of the world? Some of that means deep listening. Some of that means taking a moment to breathe. Again, something that seems so normal, but right now is very clear on our minds that some people are kept from breathing. We also keep in our minds all of the police officers for whom this week has been incredibly stressful. And we feel their burden as they seek to keep uh, crowds peaceful, while also knowing that much of the protest is going on around the system in which they have been trained. And so, again, we keep all of our broken world together in prayer as we come today and worship. So we're glad that you're here. Let us listen to the Father calling us all into creation, the Son who has redeemed us and leads us forward towards the paths of justice, who knows what it means to live in a broken world, and the Holy Spirit that blows through our midst and binds us together, the triune God. Let us come together in worship today. Amen. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. We deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical mercy of our God, we have peace through God, through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Your sins are forgiven. Let us live and act now in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters from the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be lights in the dome to light the sky, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light he to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the animal from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was an evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great, great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them by saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, 
and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with a seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Once again, we have the joy and privilege of welcoming the Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, to join us in worship today to give us a message to proclaim God's peace and hope in the gospel news and to give us some challenging words. So I ask that you and that I and that we all sit back and listen with open hearts, with open minds, wondering what the Spirit might be doing as our presiding bishop addresses the ELCA, which also happens to be the whitest denomination in the United States. As she addresses us today, may God's Spirit be with us and lead us forward. Welcome, Bishop Eaton. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a, hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, 
particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly 
with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity of racial injustice, Anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together, in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity. We can make that a reality. Amen.
confess our faith together with people throughout time and space in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray together for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops Elizabeth Eaton and Gerald Manschult, all pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation, even in ever-changing and uncertain times. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. 
Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities and send your Holy Spirit to lead us to be those advocates. Inspire us all to face the injustices of the world, including racism, both in the system and even within ourselves, with boldness and confidence that you call us to respond with. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another, in people of all different cultures and skin colors, and to listen to their stories, even when their stories may sound so different than our own. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. Give us wisdom and courage to listen and to know how to respond and give us contentment as we listen and know that we will make mistakes but that you guide us forward if we listen to your call hear us O god your mercy is great god of companionship you accompany this body of faith as the rhythms of summer begin protect all who now begin to travel Renew all who enjoy a time of Sabbath and help those who need Sabbath to take it. And shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. We pray for all of those who are ill, sick, or suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Be with all of them and with all of the people whose names are known to you and we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, who leads us forward with justice, we pray for all people involved in protests this week. We ask that you will surround police officers whose week has been so stressful, to give them kindness of heart, rest when needed, and wisdom on how to respond in stressful situations. Be with all protesters and help them to direct their actions in peace while they tirelessly work toward justice. Be with us all as we stand by and help us to know how to respond in times that bring about your peace and your justice in our world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. May Christ's peace be felt in your homes and in your lives. We pause now to give thanks for all of the ways that you continue to support the ministries of the church through your financial offerings. We give thanks to you and thanks to God for sending the spirit of, of generosity to you all. And in thanksgiving, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.